Congratulations, graduates, on your academic success. And uh, we look forward to what you're going to do uh, from here. Congratulations as you think about your future, professional success. So what does that even mean? What is success? Uh, that's why I love the story of Eliezer, Adino, and Shama. Don't you love that story? A tale tucked away in the Old Testament that teaches us a lot about this squishy subject of success. What does it mean to be successful? For fun, I googled the question, who are the most successful graduates of Loma Linda University. I'm curious about this because I sit on the Student Success Committee, and I'm wondering, who are the most successful graduates? Well, the first hit took me to a website called Ranker.com where they ranked the top 11 most successful graduates of this university, people like Lori Sutton, retired brigadier general, who at the time was, at one time, the highest-ranking psychiatrist in the U.S. Army. Also who made the list, Jerry Yang, the professional poker player, <laughs> who has earned over $8 million playing poker. He has a master's degree in health psychology from Loma Linda University. <laughs> Also on the list, Samuel H. Wood, and this is his bio. It says, the scientist credited as the first man to clone himself. But I noticed he's only on the list once, <laughs> so I'm not really sure whether he's on the list or I don't know. But apparently, he's in the top 11 most successful alums of Loma Linda University. How do you know? What, why did they get on that list? What is the success? Ah, oh, that's why I love the story of Eliezer, Adino, and Shama. Don't you love that story? It teaches us a lot about success. Now, there are some who would suggest you know you're successful when you have become a household name. Okay, well, that makes sense, right? Like Kardashians, or I mean, if you have fame and celebrity, then you, by default, are successful. Is that right? I have to say, I have tasted the heady potion of fame and celebrity. Now, mind you, it wasn't legit, but I tasted it, and I sure felt successful in that moment. My wife, Sheree, and I were flying home from Honolulu, and we got to the airport, discovered that earlier that day there had been this security breach, which meant uh, the line to get through TSA snaked all through the airport and spilled out onto the sidewalk outside. But we got there plenty early, not to worry. We got in the back of the line and waited, waited, maybe an hour, hour and a half. Only then did I figure out that I had left my brand new camera in the rental car. And so I said to Shri, hey, you go on home. Um, there's no way I'm going to go get the camera and then wait through this line again. I'm going to miss the flight, but I'll figure something out. I'll probably meet you tomorrow at home, but you go ahead. I need to go back and get that camera. And so I caught a cab, went to the uh, rental car agency, and then he gave me a ride back to the airport, and I found my place in the back of the line calculating with my watch, okay, there is no possible way I'm going to make this flight. So I was pondering what to do next when a security guard said to me, uh, hey, you can come with me. And so I fell in line next to him, and we were walking together, and he said, uh, you know, we get a lot of celebrities on the island. <laughs> uh, and so whenever I can, I, I try to spare them the long line, especially today, and we've got a special security room in the back where there won't be any line. 
I said, well, were you at the camp meeting last weekend where I spoke? <laughs> he said, oh, I didn't know you were speaking here. Uh, no, I just love all your movies. <laughs> now, I have posted a couple family videos on my YouTube channel. <laughs> I have. Uh, but I was surprised he recognized me from that because I'm mostly the one behind the camera. But I said, well, which movie was your favorite? Oh, there's so many of them, right? I said, I know, right? <laughs> uh, you were great in White Men Can't Jump. And, I, and I'm thinking I never saw that movie. And I love The Hunger Games, another movie I have never seen. And my favorite sitcom of all time, Cheers. And then I knew, Woody Harrelson, okay. Because I've actually heard that before. And when I've gone to these websites, Woody's always the top picture that comes up when I do that. And so, at least now I know who I am. And he says, he says to me, you know, there was just this magical chemistry with you and the gang on Cheers, right? It's, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you ever get back together with them? Do you, like, stay in touch with the old gang? I said, uh, I, <laughs> I have not talked to anybody of the old gang for forever, <laughs> which is true. I haven't. <laughs> Now, as we're getting to this secret room and I see the security apparatus set up there, I begin to get nervous. And it occurs to me that this is how really good people end up in jail. <laughs> so I figure I had better come clean. So I said to him, uh, you're probably going to need to see an ID, right? He said, oh, no, I know who you are. Okay? And besides, celebrities like you always carry an alias. I said, I do too. Carl Hafner. <laughs> Carl Hafner is my alias. Uh, and it's a great alias. I discovered later, actually, Woody Harrelson and I were born within a few days of each other, same year. We're almost exactly the same age. Our moms were pregnant at the same time. <laughs> Not only that, we were living at the time in Ohio. Woody grew up 10 minutes south of where we lived in Ohio. Plus, when he was in college, he felt a calling to the ministry. He almost took theology instead. He went into acting, and that's turned out pretty good for him. <laughs> So I get to the gate just about the same time as my wife did. And she said, oh, you decided not to go get the camera. And I showed her the camera. She said, how on earth did you get through that long security line? <laughs> I said, celebrity has its perks. <laughs> now, I got to admit, in that moment... I felt really successful. <laughs> so maybe that's it. If you get the VIP treatment, then that makes you a success, right? Or no? What, what, what is success? Ah, that's why I love the story of Eliezer, Adino, and Shama. Don't you love that story? It teaches us a lot about true success. Well, what is it, anyway? Thomas Jefferson once suggested, success is the individualistic pursuit of happiness, which when you think about it is the antithesis of what Jesus taught when he said, no, actually true success, kingdom success, is not the pursuit of happiness for yourself, but rather the pursuit of happiness for others. In the words of E. Stanley Jones, the most miserable people in the world are self-centered. 
people who don't do anything for anybody except themselves. They are centers of misery without exception. On the contrary, the happiest people are the people who deliberately take on themselves the sorrows and troubles of somebody else. Their hearts sing with a strange, wild joy automatically and with no exceptions. Because in the end, success is not some goal to be achieved. Rather, it is the inevitable joy in a journey of serving people. That's success. And that's, of course, what we learn in the story of Eliezer, Adino, and Shama. Don't you love that story? It's been a long, brutal day of battle. David slumps over the fireplace, poking at the embers with a stick. It's grumbling to himself, oh, I'm so thirsty. The water out here is so bitter and brackish. If only I could have a drink from my well in Bethlehem. But of course, now the Philistines, the hated Philistines, they occupy my city. They have my water rights. They control everything. And he, ah, he said, no time for that right now. We have a battle to prepare for. And so he calls all of his generals around, and they start to think strategy. Should we attack tomorrow from the north or the east? And David is so preoccupied in the planning, he fails to even notice his three mighty men, they're called in Scripture. His three generals slip off into the shadow. Eliezer, psst, there. Adino, oh, what's up? What are you guys doing tonight? Huh? What are you doing? To, well, I don't know why. Because I heard David express that the desire of his heart would be to have a drink in the well from Bethlehem. What are you doing? We're going with you to give David the desire of his heart. So they donned their grungiest fatigues and put soot from the fireplace all over their faces. Then they sneak out of camp and start racing down this grassy hillside. Now, even though it has been a long day of battle and they are physically exhausted, it's like their legs are wings. It's like they can fly. They are so exhilarated by this mission because it's not a mission for themselves, but rather a mission to give somebody else the desire of his heart. And they go past that place where the story had often been told of how David had killed a lion with his bare hands right there, and then on a little further, they come to that thicket where the story was told of how David had killed a bear there, and over off into the distance, they can see the sheep and the pasture, but of course now they are not shepherded by a humble Jewish boy, but the Philistines own the sheep, they own the pasture, they own the city, they own everything anymore. They come to that wall outside of the city and they know a secret place that they can sneak in. But now, of course, they must be exceptionally careful because there are guards stationed everywhere. And so they stalk like cats, racing from shadow to shadow to barn to house to barn to tree to until they're maybe a nine iron shot away from the city well. There they watch. As the guard drifts to sleep and lays down, so they tiptoe to the well and step over the slumbering guard, let themselves into that rock stairway that takes them down to the water. And Eliezer tosses the gourd into the water and scoops it up and then pours it into a leather pouch. They tie it tightly and then come back up out of the well and step over the sleeping guard through that secret place in the wall outside the city, and then they start racing back. And when they get within camp, now you understand, the sun is just beginning to crease the horizon. Fingers of light stretch across the sky, and they're just getting to camp when they hear, who goes there? It is me, Eliezer, Adino, Shama. Well, where were you guys last night? Who we were looking for? We thought maybe the enemy had captured you. What happened to you? Oh, what, what? and they all excitedly start talking over each other. Well, David, and the, the, he was thirsty in the well in Bethlehem, and this guy was sleeping. Never, we'll, we'll explain it later. Is David in? 
David has just gotten out of bed. Even though he's already anointed his beard with spices, it's already beginning to sweat, it's sticky, and he throws the flaps of his tent open. And there, much to his surprise, stand three of his most trusted men, Eliezer, Adino, Shama. <laughs> what are you doing here? Oh, David, Eliezer steps forward. Future king of Israel, May you live long and be prosperous. We heard you say last night that the desire of your heart would be to have a drink from your well in Bethlehem. And so, David, we want to give you this. And with that, he handed the leather pouch that contained the precious water. And David holds it as if it were the Holy Grail. When it dawns on David what these men have done, the risk that they have taken, all to give him the desire of his heart, he he is just overwhelmed with emotion. He can't even speak. Instead, he takes that precious water and he walks away from the tent and lifts the pouch and spills the water polka dots his dusty feet, and of course the dry earth quickly absorbs it. And David exclaims, not even I am worthy of such great sacrifice, the risk that these men have taken. I am not worthy. We find this story in 2 Samuel chapter 23. First, we meet the three mighty men of David. Verse 8, these be the names of the mighty men whom David had. First, Adino, the Esnite, he lift up his spear against 800 whom he slew at one time. And after him was Eliezer, the son of Dodo, the Ahohite, one of the three mighty men with David, when they defied the Philistines that were there gathered together to battle, and the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand clave unto the sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to spoil. And after him was Shammah, the son of Aji the Hararite, and the Philistines were gathered together into a troop. There was a piece of ground full of lentils, and the people fled from the Philistines. But Shammah stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines, and the Lord that day wrought a great victory. And then what follows is the story I have just shared, as I remember Dick Dirksen telling it many, many years ago. But I've never forgotten the story. But there's now the rest of the story, a really interesting postscript here in Scripture. Verse 18, we meet Abishai, who was chief over the three mighty men. So their boss, their supervisor, was Abishai, who happened to be uh, the brother of Joab. Joab was David's general. Abishai was just under him, a lieutenant general. But he was the supervisor of the three, we read. And Abishai lifted up his spear against the 300, and he slew them. So if you want to judge a person's success on their performance, then Abishai meets the bill. Here, he slay 300, and he had the name over the three. In other words, he was more famous than Eliezer, Adino, and Shammah. Was he not then most successful of the three? Was he not then most honorable? Well, of course. His performance, his position, his prominence, his fame. Therefore, he was their captain. How be it? 
he attained not unto the three. He was not as successful as Eliezer, Adino, and Shama. Why? Well, because, see, success is not some goal to be achieved, but rather it is the inevitable joy in a journey of serving others. So graduates, go and carry out the mission of Loma Linda University and continue the healing ministry of Jesus. And this is how we will measure your success as you serve. In Jesus' name, amen.